Let us pray. Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. For everyone that asks receives and everyone that seeks find and everyone that knocks the door is open. If you see there, he's talking about everyone that asks, keep asking. They will receive, keep receiving. So I don't know what you are asking the Lord for at this hour. Why don't you put yourself there? I am asking in this month, Father, in the name of Jesus, grant this unto me because this is according to your will. Asking for everyone that asks, they receive. Everyone that seeks, find. And everyone that knocks, to him the door is open. I pray that today the door shall be open to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Redeeming the time. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 16. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 16. See then that you walk circumspectly. That's an old English to say walk carefully. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Methods. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Verse 17. Thank you. So, that is telling us, therefore, that it's going to require the wise people to know what the will of God is and for them to do it. Because a time will come when doing the will of God will be abnormal because the days are evil. Coming to church will be strange because the days are evil. Even carrying the Bible, how many people carry the Bible today? They don't anymore, only few because of what people will say or because I do not want people to know that I'm a fanatic of Jesus. Whatever the reason, that is what's in, or what is happening now. Whereby coming to church with your Bible will be seen as something strange. Because the days are evil. Therefore, he said, walk circumspectly. Be careful how you live your life. Because some of your friends will tell you off that you are too serious about Jesus. Some of your friends will tell you off that you are praying too much. What's happening there? Because the days are evil. The things that we thought were evil in those days, and even till now, people say they are good things. And the one that we have always known to be good, from generations till now, people say they are evil. You can put the name of those things there. Because the days are evil. Walk circumspectly. Carefully, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. What does it mean to redeem? To redeem means to buy back. To redeem means to bring back the lost ground, bring back the lost glory, bring back what has been lost, opportunity that has been lost, bring them back. Is it true that you can bring back an opportunity? Is it not said that opportunity once lost 
cannot be regained, but it's not true. The Greek Bible. Because there are people in the Bible that missed the opportunity, but then God came to their rescue and they got it back. You two will get yours back. Amen. That is redeeming the time. Redeeming the time is looking for ways whereby you can make amends. Redeeming the time is looking for ways whereby you can improve in your relationship with God. It says, because the days are evil. That is very poignant to that verse. Why must you redeem the time? Why must you bring back what has been lost against all contradiction? People will say it's not, you cannot do it. People will look at you with a strange heart. Every time you tell them about God, why? Because of this. And that is how you, and that is the reason why you must find out how you can redeem the time. And that word redeeming the time is in the present tense. Redeeming the time is something that you must continue to do when you find the opportunity. Redeeming the time. Part two. Redeeming the time. Part two. God wants you to be wise how you live your life. Because wise people are thinking, are thinking people. Today, we thought of it. What was I gain? What will I gain if I come to church? Why do I have to come to church at all? There are some justification that convince you why you must come to church. The reason is known to you, but they are justifiable in your own eyes. And that's a wise decision. For you could have stayed back and sleep and hide under the duvet. Don't just follow God. Read the Bible to know what his will is. He said, therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. God can never be out of fashion. That's what some people want us to believe. It can never be out of fashion. He said, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So what is the will of the Lord? You will know it from the Bible. As we daily read it. But, but because majority are not doing this, you must be wise. You must be the wise one, knowing what the will of the Lord is, to do what majority have not been doing. Because the days are evil. You must make every opportunity to make a difference. Tell somebody say, make a difference. You see, we're talking so much about changing the world. But you know, the world cannot be changed until your own world is changed. Because when your own world is changed, then out of that experience, you've been there. You'll not be able to tell people why their own world needs to change. Amen. That is how it works. You see, what gives me the what gives me, gives me the, the, the courage to encourage people is because I have been encouraged by God. Regardless of the situation, I've, been, I've seen people that God brought out of the primitive and brought them to life. Right. I've heard of it. That is enough for me to tell people about God. I've seen the lives of people change. You talk about immigration people or whatever. I've seen people that were immigrationless, but one when they came to the Lord and in the whole, and the whole ministry, God gave them that immigration. I've seen people that they were married for five years, seven years, five years, seven years. I know them. They know me. They had no children, but when they saw what God did in this ministry, they had their own children. In fact, one of them had twins. So what else? So I've seen miracles happen. And that is what I need to tell people, to convince people about God, that God is here. What about you? We don't need to beg anybody to, to remind them about the goodness of God so that they can testify. If God has done it, you will remember, won't you? If it was difficult for you to get 20 pounds two weeks ago, it was difficult to eat. And then, fast forward, three weeks now, you now have 100 pounds. 
And they're talking about testimony. Won't you remember where you were two weeks ago? That is testimony. Why are we denying God of his goodness? You can make a difference. We can all, we can all identify this. No one should catch your laws about God. You know it. Give God the glory. Turn somebody and say, give him the glory. That is how to redeem the time of your life. Even if you've had somebody say something about God and you clap for that person. Bible says, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Because you have clapped for them, fast forward. Somebody will clap for you next time. Amen. That is how it works. You must not be jealous or envious of the goodness of God in somebody's life and say, do you think that you can sing better than me? No, it's not about competition. Turn somebody and say, it's not about competition. I've known that since I became a Christian. I don't compete with anybody. God has given everybody gifts. You think for his glory. It's there in the Bible. So you cannot put God into ransom. I said, come on, play keyboard. No, I'm not going to play keyboard today unless you give me money. How can I give you money? If I give you money, then money is the one that induces you, not God. And then you will go to a place whereby they can give you better money. Is that serving God? They didn't give me money when I was playing my own keyboard. They didn't give me money. I was just serve God. That's how to redeem the time. Redeem the time by looking for opportunity to improve in whatever you're doing. King David said, For I know my transgression, my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Psalm 51. Verse 3. Another Bible translation reads, For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. When you see somebody, he knows what God says that they should do, but they don't want to do it. Is that not rebellion? That's a witch. That's a witch in the church. Because if you have the spirit of God in you, and they say you should do something, and you know God says you should do it, why are you then saying you are not going to do it? And you say, oh, uh, this one is a witch. That's not, that's not, that one's not a witch. There, there are witches in church as well. Amen. It's a spirit. Spirit of rebellion. Spirit of witchcraft. They are the same. And they must be dealt with in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You don't allow them. Otherwise, they will interfere with your own spirituality. Before you know it, the sin of Achan will spread. A canic spirit will spread. Not in my house. Say, say, say to yourself, not in my house. Not in my house. So to redeem the time, brothers and sisters, the number one thing I believe you should do, in addition to what we have said last week, what we said last week is that number one, you must acknowledge the presence of God with you. Because that is a, is a key to victory. I know God is with me. And because I know and I know that God is with me, it will inform my decision. It won't it. I will not be able to swear or use the F word. Because I know God is with me. I remember the many years ago when a woman was driving around Carson Avenue, where I used to live. And she did it deliberately. I didn't know what else to say to her. I just said, go to church. And then she looked at me. What has God got to do with this way? Because that's what I can say. Go to church. When you go to church, they will teach you manners. That's it. Because I cannot swear at you. I cannot do any other thing. Just go to church. So I said last week that acknowledging that the, the presence of the Lord is with you is one way of redeeming the time. Because it will, it, will, it will keep you on track. You look for the opportunity to make amends. And then I said last week also, number two, is for you to now reach out to people with the same love of God. 
But that's how you can change their world because your own world has been changed. Amen? So in continuation, there, number three, acknowledge what you have lost. Because if you have not lost anything, God cannot make a difference in your life for recovery. Jesus said, it's only those who are sick that need what? A physician. So if there's a problem that I know that I have, that man cannot help me, bishop, pastor cannot help me, who can help me? God. And I come to God. And God fix me up. Will I ever forget what God did? David said, I recognize, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. So acknowledge what you, what you have lost. That is how to redeem the time. This is where you begin if you must redeem or regain lost time in your life. The prodigal son is someone we should learn from. He has been there. How many people remember the prodigal son in the Bible? He experienced famine and dryness. He was not given he was not even given an animal food to eat. Things got that bad for him. Are you, have you experienced it? That things are becoming bad financially. Then, let's acknowledge it. God, there's a problem. And I know you can fix it. And I'm ready to do anything you tell me to do. Am I talking to somebody? That is how God can fix you. You see, many people talk about this God, that God is a miracle worker, that God can give. But they themselves have not experienced it in their lives because they are not letting God to do his work. So if you want to experience it in your own life, acknowledge where you are gone wrong. Amen? Amen? That's what David said. There's no point in pretending that all is well. When you're already in the well. Somebody that is in the well already. How can it be well? Acknowledge it. The prodigal son acknowledge it. That things go bad. And you don't have to wait. Till things get bad. To make amends. Luke chapter 15. Verses 16 to 17. Amen somebody. Luke chapter 15. Verses 16 to 17. He longed to fill his stomach, prodigal son, with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, so that means that all along, he was not himself. Amen? That's what's happened in most cases to us. When we take some decisions, because we are being rushed. Do it now, otherwise it's late. It's not true. If it is for me, huh, it will not be late. Even if I get there late, Jesus Christ deliberately got there late for who? Lazarus. On the fourth day, the fourth day, did he not raise Lazarus? That's for the one. Even if I get there late, <laughs> it can still he waits, waits for him. Do you believe that? That is faith. So don't do anything on that rush rush. Because the spirit of God is not from Russia. Don't do anything on that rush rush. Did you get the joke? <laughs> when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare. And here I am, starving to death. Can you see he's being wise? He's making decisions and deduction. You see, God is not looking for food to lead. He's looking for people that will wise up. Who's, who, who tells that God cannot reason what you are reasoning? This man is making logical decisions, making comparative analysis. See where I am now. Am I not better? Is it not better for me if I had waited and stayed with my father? 
Hello? So who has, who, who is telling you that you cannot be deducted? You can also analyze where you are. Where you are and where you are and where you are heading to. Through the help of God. That's the reason why you are still around. Because if you are not useful, you know you have been gone. But you are still around because God knows you are useful. Amen? Tell me, tell yourself, I'm not, I'm not waste. I'm not, I'm not a waste. Amen? You know, some people, they just see themselves as going forward. So they're just wasting time occupying space. Do you see? Is that how you see yourself? Don't see yourself as wasting and occupying space. You are you are a woman going on a mission. You are a man going on a mission, and you will get there. Some are not even convinced. I said you will get there. Verse eighteen. I will set out. And go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Verse 19. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Verse 20. So he got up. Everyone said he got up. You know, it takes courage to do something. That man was courageous. To make a return. You know some people because they lack courage. They will not make a return. Even though they have been told. Where the mistake. Where the mistake started from. You know because of Christ. They will still continue in the wrong direction. It takes courage to return. Somebody tells somebody. Say, it takes courage to return. It is true please. It takes courage to return. This man returned. He got up. Went to his father. He acknowledged his errors. He knew from where he fell and how to get up. Verses 20 to 24. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. <laughs> but I still will not be able to see this. And he was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. 21. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Next verse. For the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger. And sandals on his feet. Next verse. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast. And celebrate. 24. For this son of mine was dead. And is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. You too will celebrate. But celebration has a precedent. Acknowledge. Your hero. That is how to redeem the time. Don't pile rubbish up on rubbish. Don't pile them. It doesn't work. God is holy and in Him, God is light and in Him, there is no darkness at all. Redeeming the time is something you have to keep doing every day. Look for opportunity to improve. Is it as a choir member? Look for opportunity to. Do voice rehearsals, get more songs. Is it as instrumentals? Look for opportunity to improve your skill. Is it as a pastor? Look for opportunity to understand the Bible better and relationally. That's what happens. Ephesians 5 15 to 17. Be very careful. From the new international Bible I read, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, 
making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. If you care to know, it will save you precious time. The will of God. If you care to know, it will save you precious time. Number two, accept God's help. If God cannot help you, you will know because he will have told you. There's no shortcut with God. In Psalm 121, verse 2, David said, Psalm 121, verse 2, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And in 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 10 to 14, 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 10 to 14. Naaman did not recognize the help from God. He wanted something else. But then he discovered that his problem remained. You know, at times because of the package, you refuse or reject the blessing. You don't like the color of the skin of the one that God is going to use. And because of that, you write them off. That was what happened to Naaman. He did not like the instruction that the man of God gave him. He said, I dare not better river. And he went away furiously. But when you look at verses 13 to 14, a servant came to encourage him when his leprosy disappeared. So he reluctantly accepted God's help and his leprosy was removed. Don't judge a preacher by their appearance. Judge them by what they teach. Number three, redeeming the time, obey every word of God. If Naaman was still refusing the help God sent to, to him, he will still remain in his condition, would he not? In Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 15, Luke 17, 11 to 15, you might read that on your own. There were 10 people that had leprosy. They came to Jesus for help because they knew who can help them. And they stood at a distance and called out his name, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. So Jesus Christ told them what to do. Go show yourself to the priest, Master 14. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, as you think, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He accepted the help from God and he obeyed the word of God. Naaman was helped by God same way these 10 lepers were helped. God has no change, has he? His nature to deliver is still consistent. You and I now have time to redeem the evil days through Christ Jesus. You can regain what was lost. Do you believe that? Hello? <laughs> Do you believe you can regain what was lost? That position. That honor, you can, because it's scriptural. The last verse, the last chapter, I want to read 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 8 to 19. In fact, let me just read verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, God answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Whoever is saying that you cannot recover what you have lost is wrong because it is scriptural that you can recover. And I say you will recover. Verses 18 and 19. David recovered, put your name there. Pastor Abi recovered, put your name there. 
recover everything. Do you believe in everything the Americans are taking, including his two wives? I don't have two wives. <laughs> Verse 19, nothing was missing. Young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else, they are taken. David brought everything back. You two will bring them back. Come on, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. You two will get them back. I said you will get them back in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. This is time for you to redeem the time you have lost. Whatever you have lost, call them back. They have a name. Whatever you have lost, they will, you will get them back. Acknowledge your sin before God. Acknowledge where the mistake has been made. Acknowledge where the mistake has been made. And ask God for help. Ask God for help. And obey whatever he tells you to do. And you will celebrate. I say you will celebrate. Begin to talk to him. Begin to talk to him. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. God will hear you. I said, God will hear you. You will redeem that which has been lost. You will redeem that which has been lost in the name of Jesus. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you.